Hello and welcome to the review of Civilization 6 made by Firaxis and published by 2K Games. And uh, well, I think everyone knows what Civilization games are about. They're the Forex games where you build your empire and make it go through the history and try to achieve one of the victory goals. And uh, Civilization 6 is the newest uh, addition to the Civ family and uh, it is pretty damn good. It is pretty damn good. It does have uh, some issues, for sure, well, which we will go through in a moment, but it is very, very well well done, in my opinion. Uh, poss possibly the best vanilla Civ uh, base game that's ever been done, in my opinion. The other games, like Civ 5, uh, with all the expansions and everything, might be still trump it a bit, but uh, as a vanilla product, vanilla civilization, it's, it's very, very good. They brought a lot of things uh, from the 5 and uh, the previous installations, of course, into this game and uh, made a lot of additions and changes to the formula as well. Most of which uh, I think are actually for the good. And uh, it, it really revitalized uh, my interest in the Civilization game series totally uh, when 5 and uh, Beyond Earth kinda totally killed it. So that was a really, really positive thing, thing to notice when I played the game. But yeah, let's, uh, let's get through these uh, the mechanics and everything about civilization. So, so normally in civilization you start uh, with one city, and uh, you, as, as in this one you also start with city. You actually start with a settler with a settler, which you can make a found a set, uh, city. And in this uh, this playthrough of mine, uh, which I actually have played through already, this was Arabia, uh, and I was trying to get a religious victory, which I which I did do it on this one successfully. Uh, we started uh, around here with the Cairo. Uh, and settle there. You also start with one uh, warrior that you can use for exploration. And uh, one of the big things, which uh, well you don't see in this uh, because it's uh, not early game anymore, is that uh, uh, barbarians are changed now. So barbarians uh, are about ten times more aggressive and annoying in this one as they were in the previous uh, civilizations. So if you had uh, problems with barbs in uh, in five, you're gonna have a lot of problem in in this one. Uh, so barbarians. Uh, spawn camps uh, outside your area in, in like this uh, unsettled area where there's no cities, no units or anything and somewhere in the fog of the war is there but there's one barb there with their scout already so they spawn in here and they spawn uh, the camp there and they spawn a unit in there usually a spear guy guarding the camp and after a while it spawns one of these uh, scouts and the scout goes around uh, on the map and it goes scouting your cities or enemy cities or city states and uh, once it finds a, a suitable target, it pops uh, back to the camp, and uh, then uh, the camp starts spawning units like mad, and then you are in a deep, deep, deep trouble. If uh, especially if multiple camps do that, so there's this new uh, early game, a uh, very, very annoying threat from the barbarians, not just from the other civilizations, but the barbs are now really, really strong in that sense, and you need to uh, take care of them. Killing the scout uh, prevents the spawning, so keep an eye out uh, for those. For sure. And uh, let's go through the UI here as well a bit. So up here is your uh, bar where you have your science, culture, faith, money, tourism, uh, your trade routes, your envoys, and your strategic resources. You can also give reports of uh, all kinds of different things about yields, resources, and city statuses in here. You have your uh, tech tree, so the usual tech tree you have here. Uh, one biggest big problem with this tech tree is that uh, it could use a bit more work and revision because uh, you can uh, kind of get some uh, really silly things done with this one. If you look at, for example, this was one of the big complaints about the game, uh, this tech tree. If you look at the top bar here, the sailing, uh, this is uh, usually naval tech and stuff. And uh, if you just keep going through the naval here, it doesn't have any defenses. It just goes on and on and on, pretty much the steam power and the electricity and all of this and computers, and into telecommunications, and into robotics. Pretty much without having to require anything. So you can ignore uh, all of this part and just uh, steamroll towards this one uh, pretty nicely. There is a couple things you need to do, but... Uh, it has problems like this. Uh, not just uh, the top line, the, the naval stuff, which is kind of silly, but on, on the other parts as well, when you uh, basically fly to the moon before you discover steel and stuff like that. And uh, you discover planes and uh, cannot make them because you don't have aluminium that's required for the planes. 
So the, definitely the tech 3, while it's actually quite nice and uh, quite easy to understand and uh, go through now, it could use a bit more work with these uh, requirements and on things and the stuff like that. You can get to like Atomic Era very very early, like 1500s, uh, or probably faster if you really really go for it. That doesn't really make sense. Then you have uh, governments, and I'll go through the governments uh, and the civics uh, through in a moment. Then you have religion, and uh, you have your great people. Uh, we'll go through those in a moment as well, and uh, the great works, which we'll go through in a moment as well. Uh, down here, you have your map, and uh, some of the really nice uh, new map tools. You have your lenses, so you can see like a religion, continents, appeal, settler as uh, government. Settlers actually shows you like where. Uh, you already have cities and what are like nice locations. Uh, it kind of lies you as well, though, so don't ju just uh, go for the green ones. Use your own judgment because you want uh, like this resource and a uh, strategic placement of the cities and all of that. Then you have a uh, government information uh, of different governments, political and tourism uh, also in here. And let's close that. Then you have uh, some uh, other map options. You can uh, show or remove the grid. I like to create a visible so I actually see where where the tiles are pro properly. Uh, you can also hide uh, resource icons, but I, I don't know why you would ever do that because uh, they are quite key in information to see all the time. And you can also put on the yield icons so you see where you get food, uh, money, production and all of that. Easily there. These are uh, quite normal stuff. Uh, then they have added uh, these map pins, which are really really cool. I like these. Uh, so w when you find a nice spot for a city, like say there's a really amazing spot for a city here, you can just click on here, say city here and put an icon, you can choose the icon yourself, just put a hammer in there and put it there. So now there's a pin there reminding me all the times that you need to do this. And uh, I like that feature because I, I, I forget things and uh, you can point these all over the place. So that's a really cool addition to that as well. And then you have a uh, between the normal map and the strategy view. You have here uh, this uh, strategic view where you can see kind of cartoony style uh, map, uh, but a very clear and quick vision of uh, different things and uh, what's going where. If you don't want this uh, more uh, cinematic view, I guess it's called. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. And down here is your uh, you need orders button and all of this information. And up here we have uh, different leaders. We are uh, Arabia ourselves. You can click on yourself to see your nation's information here, and you can also see information about the other players and do deals and all of this, uh, usual diplomacy stuff in here. And then you have uh, world rankings, uh, that show you, show you the victory goals of the game. So science, culture, domination, religious, and there is also a score victory which is disabled on this playthrough. And you can uh, see information about those in here. So this is the overall view. You can see that we are not doing too hot uh, currently except leading in culture. You can also see and mouse over uh, that how much tourism and culture uh, and things you are doing, science, how many researches uh, everyone has done that you've met, uh, how much military strength. This is a uh, very key information here. You can see and compare how strong is your uh, opponent. So when you go to war, you don't want to blindly go into a million uh, size army when you don't have yourself that big. And religious victory, how many converted and how much faith you are pushing. And uh, when you need a uh, more uh, Thorough information, you can click on these, for example, see the science uh, information here. So you need uh, three steps to win, win a science victory, which is uh, building a spaceport, then launching an Earth satellite, then uh, researching satellites and uh, going to the moon landing, and then a Mars program here, and you win the science victory. You have a culture victory, which uh, is very confusing at first, uh, before you understand it. So for, uh, for the culture victory to win, that you need uh, domestic tourists and need to be uh, bigger than uh, someone else's. So you need a lot of culture and tourism for this to accumulate tourists and uh, you need uh, your own tourist amount to be bigger than the next highest. So at the moment uh, the highest is Congo which is 21 and we need 22. So if I get 22 tourists I would win the game but usually late game it's like hun in hundreds that you need to get. And uh, for this uh, you need uh, a lot of uh, culture buildings, uh, tourism buildings, and great works, which uh, I show uh, after these. Then you have Domination Victory, which is just uh, literally capture every capital from every nation and you win the game. And you need a strong military, so I highly recommend it. Yeah, usually it is. Usually it is. And then you have Religious Victory. And Religious Victory is basically you converting 
50% of uh, the Earth's population to your faith from each uh, civilization, basically. So you start with your own religion. If you actually do form a religion, you might not uh, get your religion if you are not fast enough. Because getting a religion, uh, there's only uh, six slots uh, for a religion. Uh, and uh, that actually might be depending on the uh, amount of players. And uh, not everyone has chance to make a, a religion. You just have to be content with whatever you get if you don't get your own religion. And you can create your religion, you can choose uh, from different uh, abilities. I'm uh, the holy cow religion. You start as a pantheon, uh, actually you start without any belief, then you uh, accumulate fate points to get a pantheon going and you choose a bonus for that pantheon. And you always get this pantheon bonus in your uh, uh, civilization. And then uh, you found a religion uh, by getting a great prophet, uh, there's a uh, wondrous and uh, there are also the fate points that allow you to get a great prophet and uh, also great person points that uh, allow you to get one of those. And you use that uh, one of the six uh, prophets to start your own religion. You can choose uh, from uh, existing uh, religions like uh, uh, Christianity, Islam, uh, Confucianism, uh, Buddhism and all of these. Uh, or you can just uh, make your own, uh, like I made uh, the holy cow for this one. And you choose uh, two abilities for that one and you can also boost uh, the religion with apostles to get that one. And uh, you use uh, uh, missionaries and apostles and uh, inquisitors uh, to fight this religious war where uh, you convert their cities to your faith. And you need to convert 50% of their population to your faith to count as a a civilization that has been converted into that religion and you need to do it for every uh, every civilization and usually a good way to is to stomp their religion out of their first so when uh, their faith is uh, out of all of their cities they cannot uh, make more faith units so they cannot get your faith sometimes ai also kind of works kind of strangely and dumbly and uh, when you have converted their cities and if they are uh, trying to go for the faith victory or where they're trying to go for the weight victory they still keep adding uh, more uh, faith units but they are uh, your fate so they kind of help you out by spreading your fate a bit more it's kind of strange but it's a really fun uh, new uh, victory condition they added into the game then there's the score victory as well that's uh, not showed in here where you uh, do different things wondrous uh, cities do wars and all that uh, everything that uh, basically everything you do in the game accumulates a score for you and you need to get that score to win all right so that's uh, the victory conditions Let's uh, start going uh, through these a bit more. So I, I showed you the technology tree, which was here. And uh, they've split off uh, civics into their own uh, tree now. So there's a civics tree, which is basically a second uh, research tree for you, but for culture instead of uh, science. And this gives you uh, a lot of the same stuff that uh, science does. It gives you uh, stuff like trade routes, uh, it gives you... Uh, Diplomatic options like uh, joint uh, alli uh, alliances and uh, joint wars and uh, things, open borders. Uh, it gives you wonders, and it gives you government types that you can choose uh, from. It gives you uh, districts, which I will explain in a moment, uh, which are a, a very big new addition to the game a mechanic. And it gives you buildings as well. And uh, the main thing it of course gives you is the is the civics that you can choose. Uh, for yourself and uh, it's it's pretty much the same as the research theory goes same way in here into the end and uh, with the civics you can go into the civics here for example, in the government here and you have your government here which I've uh, chosen so you can change your government into these from here and they have these uh, civic slots you can see how like fascism has a lot of a uh, war related monarchy has a lot of war related democracy has a lot of a uh, uh, economic and uh, diplomacy and uh, wild card options and uh, here's your uh, civic policies that you can uh, choose depending on how many of the slots you have so you can put uh, for example this in here and another one in there or oh, and get one uh, diplomatic policy going and in the wild card you can put anything and up here you would have a military but we don't have any military slots so you can change these every time you uh, research uh, a new or uh, develop a new uh, uh, civic you can uh, change your policies free, but if you have uh, logged in uh, them already you need to pay a bit of gold and you can reset them if you want to Yes, we'll, we'll just go out of there and that is very nice. Uh, I like that uh, 
uh, split up the research and uh, civics uh, into like two different th trees, so you can get a bit of both. And uh, sometimes you might lag behind on the other end, and it's kind of interesting. Also, then we had the religion which I showed you, and then we have great persons. And uh, we've had great persons before in civilization games, but it's been uh, changed now in this nice great people window here. And uh, different things you do in the game, especially districts and buildings in the districts, generate these uh, great uh, merchant and great uh, writer and scientist points, whatever, which uh, tally up here. And, on, and when you hit this uh, number, you get that uh, great person. Or someone else gets it for you, before you. But you keep the points for the next round, whoever happens to be the next great person on that category. And you can keep counting on that one. You can also use money or fate to directly buy out uh, one of these. So you don't need to wait for this uh, progress to go fully in. You can also pass, for example, if I didn't want this guy, I, I completed uh, this one. Uh, before anyone else, and I didn't want this guy, so I can pass on the set. The other guy behind me gets it, and then I save up uh, my points for the next dude. You can also see the previously recruited people in here, and who has uh, gotten those, if you know, if you've met that civilization. And there's a lot of really, really good, uh, great people in here that you uh, definitely do want to get them, especially if you're going for the space race option. There's a couple of uh, engineers and scientists that boost them up. A crap ton and uh, if you get those you'll probably win the space race and uh, then there is this uh, other uh, great people in here uh, that's basically a war stuff then uh, this is the prophets so religion engineers and uh, merchants and uh, scientists are kind of like for uh, your production and uh, research things and then you have these uh, writers artists and musicians uh, which are for a uh, for the culture stuff and for the tourism, uh, so the culture victory very much hangs on getting these guys. And when you get a, one of these guys, they create these uh, great works that you uh, display in your uh, different locations, like your palace, your uh, art museums and uh, uh, churches uh, for religious art and different things. You can see, for example, that uh, Andrei Rublev here from Renaissance era creates uh, three different uh, religious uh, great works. And these create uh, some uh, writing, uh, two of them, and then music, two of them. And uh, here are the great works. I currently have uh, only the Blood of the Martyr, which is actually a relic. Uh, so we've got a different religious kind of a great work. Which you can get uh, through religious combat and things like that. And uh, this one uh, happens to provide faith and tourism, but most of the stuff in the Great Works provides you with culture and tourism. So this is the great, the best way, pretty much, to get tourism for yourself if you are for, going for the culture victory. But any uh, nation definitely pre benefits from these, uh, especially the culture for the civics and uh, the faith uh, for for the religion, and also to buy these uh, great persons. And uh, also uh, there's a. Uh, uh, the theocracy uh, government form which allows you to buy units and uh, some of them also allow you to buy uh, buildings with the fate which is really nice and uh, let's uh, check some of the city stuff here so here's your uh, city screen down here you can see just uh, how many buildings are religious and all of these uh, amenities and all the other information here and you can see my city is uh, this size here Amenities is uh, the new happiness, so there is no longer a global happiness uh, in this game, it's amenities requirement per city, and they are provided by luxury uh, goods uh, such as uh, the citrus here, uh, luxury resources, uh, and also by uh, different buildings like the entertainment complex and uh, stuff like that, or the district. You can see uh, a lot of information about here, uh, of the city, all this... Uh, information you can see all the districts uh, in here as well and also what they produce and also wonders and trading posts and everything else so we have a trading post with arabia so my own and then you can see how the fate is uh, spread in this uh, city so we have uh, our pantheon and our six holy couch citizens so three of the people here actually do not below are, are <laughs> these uh, faithless heretics that we need to convert to our religion and uh, you have the usual, you can buy the tiles, and this list spreads and grows uh, over there. You can manage the citizens, uh, so whichever tile you want to get. Sometimes you might want to get some more food, sometimes more money, sometimes more production. Usually, I just let the AI do whatever they want, in most cases. You can buy out the buildings with money, 
and you can buy out the things with the uh, uh, fate as well and you can also change your production here so here's the production list sadly there is no uh, queuing up uh, buildings or anything like that so you just have to choose them every time let's close that one so one of the big things uh, that they changed uh, in city building is uh, is these uh, districts so you have holy sites you have campuses you have encampments commercial entertainment theater and uh, then you also get air dome and uh, spaceport later on in the game and uh, these are actually like an area you build on the map. You choose which tile it takes over. They have adjacency bonuses. Like a uh, campus here uh, actually doesn't get any bonus in this area. It usually gets a uh, bonus like for mountains and stuff like that. You have encampments, which is uh, for uh, military facilities, where you build uh, military facilities. And uh, it provides you with additional... Uh, uh, ability to shoot uh, from there as well. So usually the... Uh, Buildings, uh, oh, sorry, the cities have that uh, ability to shoot uh, enemy units. You actually require uh, walls for that uh, this time around, so you don't start with that ability. But with the encampment, you can build another uh, district there that can also shoot. So it's a uh, double as a uh, doubles as a uh, defense. It's also really strong uh, defensive point, so you can uh, really do some uh, strategic uh, defense with that. You have commercial hub for the money and the entertainment for the amenities which is basically happiness, to keep, keep your cities happy. And you have theaters uh, for uh, culture, like here you can see that these actually would get uh, extra culture in here, possibly from the wonder there. And you can also make an aqueduct, which uh, gives you uh, more housing. So housing is required uh, to have uh, basically room for your uh, growing city for the population. And they'll complain if they don't have amenities, and they complain if they don't have, uh, have the housing as well. Also, Wanderers, when you make Wanderers, they take up a tile, like here is Hanging Gardens in this tile. So here is one of my uh, uh, districts. This is my holy uh, my yeah, holy site. And it's, it's a district. And when you build a district, it allows you to build uh, buildings into the district. So, unlike in uh, other civilizations, you cannot just uh, build all the buildings immediately into your city. You have to have this uh, def uh, specific site to be able to build them. So for example, in the city center, which is the starting district that you always have, you can only make certain things. Then Holy Site can only have like a, a faith-related buildings, like I have shrine, temple, and a mosque here. A campus has a universities, a libraries, a research center, and stuff like that. Encampment has like stables, uh, barracks, uh, armory, and so on. Commercial hub has, hub has the markets, banks, uh, stock exchange, entertainment complexes like arenas and. Uh, things like that, theater square, you have uh, like uh, the art museum, archaeological museums and things uh, things for that, and uh, then uh, hangars for the air, do air dome and uh, spaceport really doesn't have any any buildings, you just uh, make the space things there, but yeah this is a really great change uh, to the city building these uh, districts and as I said, uh, they have these uh, dependencies and uh, kind of these uh, bonuses from being in a certain location and being next to each other so you really need to pay attention uh, where you build your city and where you build your districts oh uh, by the way there is also harbor uh, a district for uh, the naval stuff which i totally forgot because we are in the middle of the desert here but yeah there is also a harbor and uh civilization always has a uh, had that thing that you really need to get the best possible location for your city of course you want the most resources and everything for the, for that always but now with the districts uh, you need to pay even more attention where to place them because uh, because of the bonuses and uh, to be able to make all the things you want and also wanderers have a uh, now a lot of terrain dependencies and uh, dependencies on districts as well so there's uh, stuff like that that you need to have next to a certain district on a coast uh, on a on this kind of flat tile for example so you need uh, a lot of uh, these uh, things that you need to remember, especially before you are even de uh, deciding where to settle, you need to figure out that, okay, here I put the district, here I put the wanderer, and I need to have these things. And it's a lot of things to remember, but it's also a really fun addition. And people have uh, already created cheat sheets uh, that you need this, this, and this, and this way, so you can make this. And w w which is understandable. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like this change. This is a very, very, very fun change to the game as you need to play 
a lot more uh, cautiously with the terrain and it's really really cool mechanic that they added in, in one of the biggest uh, best changes I love about this game. Also you may have noticed uh, when I've been uh, pointing out things and low showing the map here so a lot of people are kind of iffy on the graphics. I personally actually like it a lot. This kind of bit more cartoony style, very clear uh, defined uh, units and everything. I like that a lot. Uh, but what I really, really, really love about this is the fog of war. So this uh, kind of drawn uh, old map style when you ha have been in there but you don't see it currently. You see this kind of fog of war area here. I really like this. This looks amazing, especially in here as well. It's like well, there's a city that we draw on the map there, and there might be a river there, and things. Uh, it's it's really cool. I like it a lot. Some people were complaining that it's hard to see uh, from the walk of uh, fog of war from the undiscovered areas, but I I kind of don't agree on that at all. That's a really cool addition as well. Another thing uh, that was added was the religious combat, which I kind of referred to already. Uh, so normally you just uh, fight with the units, but you can now also fight a. Uh, with religious units against other religious units. Religious units can also pass through borders without uh, really caring any about anything. It's just pop in and say, hello, your city is now my fate. Uh, unless there's a their preacher fighting you. And they're gonna zap each other from the, from the sky with lightning when they do this religious combat. And it's kind of fun addition. Oh, but it also uh, is kind of annoying if you don't have your uh, own uh, fate units to fight their fate units. You have like not nothing you can do. Other than just declare a war on the on the other guy to prevent them from uh, sending their fate units at you, and they they do they they will send their fate units to convert your cities, which is one uh, one another thing, uh, another annoying part of the game because uh, one of the diplomatic options here, if you uh, go in here and you uh, make a demand uh, to them uh, or talk to them. Is that uh, do not settle next to me or do not uh, convert my cities? The AI doesn't give a shit about your uh, <laughs> wishes. I've I've had a AI who uh, I asked her not to convert my cities, and he did it uh, immediately after that next turn, several times in a row. So he doesn't give a shit about your demands. And uh, the AI in this game, it's it's okay, but it has a lot of problems. It does a uh, really dumb uh, trade deals. Although that's probably going to be get patched up very, very quickly. But in general, the AI is kind of bipolar. Uh, it just uh, f flips uh, immediately on you from side to side from smallest of things. And it, it just denounces you and uh, thinks you're a watermonger, whatever you do, pretty much. And my approach with it was that, that, that I just think that everyone is an enemy combatant immediately and just a. Uh, it's just a uh, calm before the storm when they don't uh, aggro on you. But yeah, the AI definitely, uh, in diplomacy and in warfare, is not not the greatest uh, in this one. It's it's never been uh, that great in, in civilization, to be honest. And uh, it definitely has some uh, some very big problems with the diplomacy and the uh, trade and also the warfare. It doesn't seem to uh, upgrade their units uh, and just spams uh, a lot of units, er early units, like a... Uh, Warriors and uh, horsemen and stuff like that, and then they just get they just get steamrolled by your uh, uh, higher level, uh, higher uh, uh, future era units. They just uh, mow down hundreds of their units without breaking a sweat, and it's it's a bit annoying. And uh, doing alliances and being friends with them uh, is literally impossible if you want to do anything in the game. If you convert their city, if you're going for a religious victory, they hate you. If you are earning too much money, they hate you. If you earn too many great people, they hate you. If you make too many wonders, they hate you, and so on and so on. So whatever you do, they are pretty much going to hate you. You might have like one friend in the game and everyone else will be just denouncing you left and right and basically might attack you at any point. So yeah, AI diplomacy, very, very much not good. Competitive, they do also kind of usually defeatable. Usually if you just create a choke point and just spam a uh, range units there and uh, just uh, shoot them as they come uh, until they've depleted their units basically into your impenetrable uh, defensive wall uh, and then you just go and win, win the war. It's like... Mm. And oh uh, yeah, uh, the trading has uh, some uh, interesting, interesting problems at the moment where they just offer half of their kingdom and, and their horse and their money 
for the simplest of things. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the AI part of the game definitely needs work. But but saying that, the game is still very very awesome. I I personally like it a lot, and uh, consider it the most most fun civilization of all time. Even with those issues, even with uh, some of the victory conditions being kind of annoying. The domination victory is what about the, but it is always it's actually kind of fun uh, just going steamrolling uh, through the empires, uh, even uh, especially when they just keep denouncing you and they they just want to, you to go and kill them. Culture victory was kind of fun to push as well, especially thanks to the new uh, uh, great people system and the new great work system. I really enjoyed uh, doing culture victory, and also the science stuff is the same uh, as always. Uh, you just build a spaceship and go to space. But it also felt uh, pretty fun and satisfying to do. And uh, the religion victory... Uh, I'm kind of on the fence about the religion victory. I love that there is now a religious victory in the game. But how you need to do it is, is kind of annoying because you need to spam a lot of holy units. Just crap tons of holy units. And send them all over the world and spam uh, on their cities convert their cities and then fight their religious units with your religious units and uh, it gets a bit tedious over time I, I'm, I'm fairly certain a lot of people don't like that part of the game because it's it's very 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 tedious and very you need to just uh, send a unit send a unit make a unit send a unit make a unit, send a unit, make a unit and uh, it, you need hundreds of units to do that especially when there's a lot of other nations like on this one but still I, I, I do like it as well. <laughs> I, I'm a bit for a punishment and tediousness, it seems. Uh, what else? What else do we have? So yeah, uh, we have also the city states in here. So there is a... The city states are back again. And you have envoys that you send to them. Uh, when you first meet a, a civilization... Uh, oh, sorry, a city state. If you are the first to meet a civil uh, city state, you get a one uh, free envoy in there. Otherwise, you uh, accumulate these uh, envoy points with the influence points, and you can see like here that I generate a uh, three per turn, so it takes uh, about a million years to get one influence point. And they are very scarce uh, that you have can uh, get, uh, so you need to kind of choose uh, carefully which one uh, you send your envoys to. And uh, every city state has a uh, their type: uh, industrial, religious, religious cultural and there's also uh, co economic and uh, research and uh, they have different bonuses that the envoys give you so all of them have one three and six option and then the suzerain option as well and uh, the first one uh, almost always gives you uh, something for your capital like this gives a uh, plus two production for the capital for production wondrous buildings and districts uh, fate to the capital culture to the capital money to the capital and research to the capital and then you have the next one, which gives uh, uh, always uh, production, faith, whatever, uh, to the zone that's uh, linked to it. Like uh, this one gives you industrial zone gets a uh, uh, production, for example, and fa uh, holy site gets a uh, faith on all of them. So not only your capital, but every city with with one of those gets one. And then uh, the next one is pretty much plus extra to that same thing. But uh, having for example, if you're a, say, faith nation, and you get someone like Candy next to you, and you get faith to your capitals, and more faith to your holy sites, and more faith to your holy sites, you really want to get these uh, city-states for yourself, so that you're gonna keep pumping those uh, extra points out of your existing things. Uh, it's just a boost your uh, already existing uh, plan for victory. And uh, you also have the suzerain status in here. So they start out uh, very low at 3 and then it keeps going up and up uh, as uh, the times progress and the cities uh, progress themselves. And uh, the, whoever has the most uh, envoys in the city is, is the suzerain of the city. And every uh, city-state has their uh, specific uh, unique bonus that the thing gives you. So you always get the suzerain diplomacy bonus, city so uh, follows you in the war. Units uh, may enter the city lands, you can build there with the builders, you can see their tiles, you can pay them money to take control of their military, which is pretty damn cool. When someone attacks you and you are sitting on a wealth of money, you just hire the city state units, or you can uh, use them to help you in a war to attack the other nation as well, which is really cool. And actually control them instead of just letting them uh, do their own thing with their units. And also it gives you their uh, 
uh, resources like the, this one that gives me uh, citrus and tobacco. So that's always the same uh, for all the city-states, but up here uh, on the top part you can see that there is a Brussels unique bonus to your cities get plus 15% production towards wanderers. This one gives me relics every time uh, we discover a uh, natural wonder and we earn fate from a uh, relics a bit more. So every every city state has uh, this uh, different unique suzerain bonus in addition to the generic suzerain bonuses. And uh, getting these will help your uh, victory goal a lot in, in many ways. One thing uh, about the city states is that uh, AI seems very aggressive towards them. Especially Germany, who just absolutely hates every city-state. Russia also likes to kill them. And uh, they die like flies, especially early game. You, lo you lose like half of the city-states very early on because uh, of the aggressive AI. They also like to grab their lands, which is quite nice for them. And sometimes also I like to grab them, so... <laughs> city-states uh, may not live too long. Sometimes you might want to even defend a... a fa uh, city states that are beneficial for you for example in this playthrough not right now uh, but uh, deeper into the game uh, Gilgamesh here from the Sumeria tried to kill candy and I defended the, the candy's existence just that, uh, so that I could keep my envoys in there and get the suzerain bonus going and uh, I had to do that just to keep them alive it seems uh, Gilgamesh is actually punching up some units here to attack me at the moment Another thing uh, about the city placement uh, they added in this game is that uh, with the existence of the districts and uh, the harbors, uh, it's no longer required that you have a city next to the coastline to be able to uh, make uh, boats. You can now be three tiles in the inland as long as one tile you can access is uh, in the ocean. So for example here, I don't think this actually is just one tile away. Let's consider if my city was here, I could go do one, two, three tiles, and this tile is in the water. So I could build the harbor district on this tile, and all my shippings would be made from here, from that point on. And uh, a pre pretty valid tactic now is to never actually settle like this, directly on the coast. Because uh, you put your city in danger of uh, barbarians on boats, when you could have just put your city inland, like here on the hill here, and have the harbor only on the coastline and it has, this also gives you more uh, tiles that you can access uh, inland as opposed to the kind of wasted uh, ocean tiles which is also a kind of gameplay change to the game also uh, your city needs water basically and you can live without the water but they need access to fresh water not uh, ocean water or anything like that so they need rivers or they need mountains for aqueducts so that also uh, adds to the city placement plan. And that's really, really cool. But that's pretty much uh, Civilization 6. I highly recommend uh, Civ 6. If you have Civ 5 with all the expansions, uh, you might uh, wait a bit for the price to lower and maybe some of the other DLC rollout for this. Uh, but if you don't, or if you want to try a bit different Civilization, I highly recommend this one. Highly, highly recommend this one. It is difficult to get into first, especially because the barbarians, and uh, there's a lot of mechanics to learn, for sure. But yeah, it's it's very, very good. And I highly recommend trying it out. And uh, that's pretty much my review on the Civ 6. As I said, it is, it is damn nice. It is very, very nice. 20 civilizations plus the Aztecs, that uh, was the pre-order bonus. It's gonna be free for everyone uh, at 90 days after the release. And uh, all the civs have uh, very different playstyles. Uh, they usually are geared for different victory types, like uh, Arabia is very much uh, geared for a uh, science or a uh, faith victory, religious victory, and uh, stuff like that with other nations as well. But yeah, the AI, AI has a lot of problems trying to do things uh, properly with the war, with the trade, and with the diplomacy it's it's not not the greatest but it's it's decent enough especially with the barbarians to throw throw some threat at you especially if you're not uh, the most pro gamer uh, of civilization games ever like i am not i am not that good with civs i I'm, I'm decent i guess but i'm not totally not on a pro level or anything and uh, i think this civ is very good for that kind of people the people who are not uh, 
super masters of the, this uh, genre, but just like to play a bit of uh, this kind of game. So it's it's very much recommended for that kind of people. But yeah, it can be very difficult with the aggressiveness of the barbarians and uh, aggressiveness of the AI and uh, just the early game difficulty. Just to even get going, basically. But yeah, that's it. So definitely, definitely check it out. Uh, well, if not that release, add a bit later, when it's uh, cheaper and with some uh, expansions. Uh, it did include uh, a lot of the things from C5 as the base game, like the Fate stuff and all of that. Used to be an expansion uh, for uh, C5 and now it's base game, which is really nice. But yeah, thank you for watching this uh, review of the Civilization 6. And uh, if you like this review, check out the other reviews, Let's Plays and everything on the YouTube channel. And check out the live stream on the twitch.tv slash or nar.tv where we play this game and many other uh, builder management strategy and other games as well every day so i'll see you there and bye bye